My name is Jessica Windishman, and I will be talking about why multitasking is a myth. One day, I was having a conversation with one of my roommates, and she wanted to tell me this really funny story, so of course, I was all ears, except I wasn't. Because at the same time, I had just received a text message from someone else that was pretty important, so I was trying to come up with a reply to that as well. So my attention's divided and I'm trying to pay attention to my friend while also trying to think of what the heck am I gonna say on this text message? Well, long story short, I look up from my phone to see my friend look at me and say, I know you have no idea what I just said because you have that look. You know, the look that somebody gives you when they, you know that they're not paying attention to what you're saying. I wear my emotions on my face, so I'm pretty guilty of this. Well, this whole trying to do two things at once was not working out for me. I just laughed and I told her I was sorry, but then I looked down at my phone only to see that what I attempted to try to write didn't make any sense. Has this been anyone else's experience before? <laughs> yeah, the amazing attempt at multitasking. Everybody does it, or tries to, but how many of us are actually good at achieving that top multitasker status? Well, some may argue that they're really good at it, but science would actually beg to differ. So I got really curious about this and I wanted to kind of dig a little deeper. You know, what is multitasking? What does science have to say about it? And what does it have to do with our brains? But first off, let's address what multitasking even is. If you didn't understand it from my amazing example, it's okay, I have a definition. Multitasking is essentially the performance of more than one task at a time. In our modern world, Multitasking is commendable, almost something we strive to be able to achieve in the name of productivity, specifically in the work world. It's like Rihanna likes to say, work, 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 work. Our culture's obsessed with work. We just pile things up until we have no choice but to do everything at once. Now, let me be real with you, this is me a lot of the time. I am a master procrastinator. I love to just save all my work to last minute until I eventually realize that I hate myself because I saved all my work to last minute. But we have this fear in our culture that having nothing to do equals not being productive. So sometimes I think we just like to make more work for ourselves. But to be fair, there are also times where we have no choice but to do a lot of things at once. Take stay-at-home working moms and dads. They do this all the time, and especially in the season of COVID, they've had no choice but to. I mean, a Zoom call with a screaming child in the back, I could not imagine, but it had to be done. Though, to that weird internal need we feel to multitask, I ask, why? Well, it's because we want to be doing something all while not wanting to do anything. To us, if we can tackle all our things at one time, it's like killing five birds with one stone, right? Actually, wrong. While we think we're able to be more productive, studies show that we actually end up losing productivity, and it takes us up to 40% longer to complete the tasks than if we were to have just done them separately in the first place. So let's go back to my example of me failing at this in my own life. If I had just listened to my friend's story, really paid attention, and then afterwards focused my energy on the text message, I would have saved myself so much time. Whereas with what actually happened is I had to have her stop, retell the story, refocus, delete the text message I tried to text, and then send it all again. But to understand this just a little more, we're gonna have to do some brain surgery. Figuratively, don't worry. The part of the brain that is used when we're focusing on a certain task is called the prefrontal cortex. So scientific, I know. Both the left and the right sides of the prefrontal cortex are working together when we're focusing on a task. It's like they're partners. But you add on another task and another task and they begin to work independently, switching between the two sides. Your brain is working differently when you're just hanging out with your friends versus when you're writing a 10 page paper. Why? Because there's more focus. And when there's more focus, where the neurons are sending each other messages that are a lot more forceful and clear. But multitasking actually stresses this whole process and causes us to feel more mentally and physically exhausted. So then what does science have to actually say about multitasking? Well, for one, I hate to break it to you, it's a myth. Your brain cannot actually work on multiple things at a time. It's all what I like to say, a language illusion. So while we like to say that we're rubbing our belly and patting our head at the same time, 
Scientifically, that's not what's happening. Earl Miller, a professor of neuroscience at MIT, puts it this way. Switching from task to task, you think you're actually paying attention to everything going on around you at the same time, but you're not. So the, the, the brain is forced to switch among multiple cognitive tasks as those tasks all use the same part of the brain. So again, if you're visual like me, again, it's not rubbing your belly and patting your head at the same time. It's more like rubbing belly, then patting red, rubbing belly, then patting head, tongue twister. It's switching back and forth. But besides multitasking being a myth, scientists are also saying that there's a lot of potential pitfalls to trying to multitask. It can have a negative permanent impact on your brain structure and compromise your short-term memory along with, again, affect your mental and physical health. But let me be real here. I know we're all going to leave here today. All of you that are watching out there, we're all going to try and multitask. It's just part of our nature, especially as college students. But we can see that it actually does a lot more harm than good. And while this started as, as a topic that I was really interested in, it made me realize the bigger issue we have in our culture, and that is that we don't know how to slow down. So I wanted to leave with an encouragement for us to just stop when we have a moment, take a second and tackle one thing at a time because chances are that thing you're tackling that you're focusing on will end up being better than if you push 10 things on top of that too. And then, and this is really gonna blow your mind, rest, take a break, allow yourself to breathe and refocus. And maybe if you're like me and you're having a conversation with your friend, listen to the conversation, enjoy your time. There are a lot of things that are going to demand our attention. Some are gonna be really important, others not as much. But we've lost sight of what it means to be present in the moment because we're so consumed with doing everything at one time. So yeah, let's stop. Let's laugh at our friends' stories. Let's take some walks, maybe even a nap. But if you're like me in those 10 minute naps turn into three hours, maybe don't do that. <laughs> But let's change the way we strive to be productive, to view productivity, because we don't have to overwhelm our lives just to prove that we can work hard.